Good day, Grade 11s. Welcome to this next lesson where we will continue doing revision of our Grade 11 maths. Right, so let's start with some trig. It says if theta equals 108 degrees, calculate the value of tan theta plus 40. So do you agree that that would give us tan of 108 plus 40, which is going to be tan of 148 degrees, which is not complicated at all because all they're doing now is asking you to put this in your calculator. It's a really easy question, 148 degrees. So all you have to do is shove this in your calculator. If I can find my calculator, there it is. And we can go, and I'm just going to get rid of this toolbar. I'm so sorry, I should have done it before and I keep forgetting. Right, so let's go. It's going to be tan. And guys, please always remember that you need to be looking for a capital D there because that means that it's in degrees and not an R for radians, okay? Because if you do it in radians, you're going to get it totally incorrect. So you need to make sure it's in degrees. It's tan of 148. Close the bracket. Equals. And that's minus 0.62, so that is equal to minus 0.62. Compared to cos squared of 108 degrees, so again we're just going to get out our calculator. And the tricky thing here is that if you can't go cos squared 108 in your calculator, what you need to do is go bracket cos, cos, for some reason it won't press. There we go. And now, of course, I've got millions of the things. Okay, so let's try again. Cars of 108. Close the bracket and then close the bracket again and then square it. If you square it over here, if you put the square there, then it's just squaring the 108. Okay, so you need to square it after the second bracket. So we're going to square it and you get an answer of 0 0.095, which is obviously approximately 0 0.1, approximately equal to 0 0,1. So that's just a little bit of calculator work which is thrown in. Right, now we get into something a little bit more complicated or interesting. It says solve for theta, we've got sine theta over three is equal to sine 50 over 4. And notice they say theta is between 90 and 0 degrees. So we've got therefore that sine theta is going to be 3 quarters of sine 50. Sine theta is 3 quarters of sine 50. So do you agree that we can just pop this in our calculator to get what sine 50 is? So we're going to go um, point seven five that is our three quarters multiplied by sine of 50 close bracket close bracket again equals and that's naught comma five seven but now we need to shift sign it to get the angle so we're going to go shift sign of the answer close the bracket equals and that is 35.06 which we're just going to round off to 35 degrees so therefore that is 35 degrees and please note it is between 90 and 0 so that's perfect now they want to know they say cos of 5 theta is equal to 0 comma 5 so do you agree that we can say 5 theta is second function cos of 0, um, 5? So let us find out what that is. So we're going to go shift cos of 0, 0.5, close bracket, equals and that's 60 degrees so 5 theta equals 60 degrees as we know and yes it is between 0 to 90 degrees but they've asked us to solve for theta so therefore theta is going to be 60 divided by 5 which is 12 degrees okay not too difficult hey right now let's get into something a little bit more complicated okay 
It is saying that sketch below the graphs, f of x is p cos x plus q, and g of x is k sin x. Okay, so this k messes with the plus or minus or up or down, or big or small, okay? In other words, it's, um, it's amplitude, okay? This messes with amplitude and this shifts it left or right. It says the x coordinate of point A is xA. Okay, it says use the graphs to write down the values of P, Q, and K. And very nicely, they have marked off that this is graph G and this is graph F. So this graph here, oh, sorry, let me just try again. Okay, this graph here is a sine graph is a sine graph and do you see it looks like a normal sine graph it's going from 0 to 360 it's going through 180 and it has an amplitude of 1 but normally at sine of 90 the amplitude is 1 and not minus 1 so k is going to be negative 1 that's all it is okay nice and easy here now let's look at f of x so f of x is the other one you will notice it has been multiplied by a number and it has been shifted. Okay, and this is, sorry, not shifting left to right, it's shifting it up and down. So do you agree it is going from one to minus three? So its amplitude is actually two because it's going up, it's going down two, and then it's going another two, then another two, then another two, okay? So therefore P in this case, is going to be 2 because halfway through this year would be its line of zero interference okay so therefore we know that that there would be the same as the x-axis right but that means that this graph has been shifted down and it's been shifted down by one so therefore this is negative one Right, then it says solve for f referring to xa if necessary, where x is between 0 and 360, where f of x equals g of x. Okay, so we need to solve for where f of x equals g of x. Okay, it says referring to xa if necessary. Okay, so in other words, they don't expect you to actually go and do the whole calculation. They just want you to read off the graph, okay, and use the value xa. You don't actually have to work out what that is. So do you agree that f of x is going to equal to g of x where they cross each other? And they cross each other at this point here and at big A, right? So do you agree that therefore it is going to be at x equals 90, and y equals minus 1, or when x equals xa, and y is going to be the value of k is minus 1, so we could say minus sine x of a. Okay, do you understand what I'm saying? It would be xa, and then the y value of that would be minus sine xa, or it would be um, 2 cos xa minus 1, whichever one works for you. Similarly, they want to know when g of x is smaller than 0. So they want to know when is the y value of the g graph smaller than 0. In other words, when is it below the y-axis? So do you agree it is below or equal to? It's below or equal to the x the x axis, shall I say, from here through to here, and that's it. That's the only time the g graph is equal to zero or oh no, it's also equal to zero at this point. But me including 360. So therefore we can say oh, sorry, g of x is going to be smaller than or equal to zero. Four, we could do it like this. We could go from naught. Actually, let's not do it like that because there's another point. No, no, it's fine. From naught to 180, so we're including 180, or, sorry, let's try again. X is an element of naught 
for 180, okay, 0 to 180, or x equals 360 degrees. Because this is saying that this is going to be smaller than or equal to zero from naught all the way to 180, including naught to 180, and at 360 degrees, it is zero again. Okay, nice question, those. Right, on to a little bit of geometry. It says O is the center of the circle. AD equals DB. Okay. And DF is X. So that length there is X. Okay. It says DO is 2. So that there is 2. D, 2 times DF. Sorry, 2 times DF. So if df is x, then do you is 2 times x, and do you agree that I can erase this and say that that is 2x? Okay, it says df equals x, so from there to there is x. They say do is 2 times df, so therefore that is 2x. And they tell you that AB is 16, so the whole of this from A to B is 16. So do you agree that this bit would be 8 and that would be 8? For the simple reason that this is split in the middle because they tell you that AD equals DB. And it says calculate the value of X. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is join the dots from O to B. Okay, so I'm going to join OB. Why? Because OB is a radius of the circle, okay? And it is equal to OB is therefore equal to OF, which equals OD plus DF, which therefore equals 3X, okay? So we know the whole of that is 3X, therefore the whole of this is 3X, okay? Right, now we're going to look at this triangle here. Okay, so we're going to say in the triangle ODB, we know that ODB equals 90 degrees. Why? Because the line, just checking something, from the center to uh, the midpoint of a chord is perpendicular to the chord. So therefore, this is 90 degrees. So therefore, we've got Pythagoras, okay? So we can say that we've got that this is 2x and this is 3x and this is 8. So now we can use Pythagoras to solve the problem, okay? So let's do that. So we know that Pythagoras says that this is the hypotenuse, right? And then this will be the one side and this will be the other side. So we know that 3x all squared is going to equal to 2x all squared plus 8 squared. So 3 squared is going to be 9, so it's 9x squared. 2x squared is 4x squared plus 8 squared is 64 take that across, we've got, and sorry, do you realize that the reason this is 3XO is because OD is plus DF is X times plus 2X, which is 3X. Again, okay, this is just 2X. So we've got 9X squared. We've got 9X squared plus 4X squared is equal to 64. So therefore, we've got 5X squared is equal to 64. We're going to divide both sides by 4. Five, so you've got 64 over 5. So therefore, x is going to be 8 over the square root of 5. <gasps> and now we need a calculator. So we're going to go 8 divided by the square root 5 equals. That doesn't help at all, does it? So it becomes 3.57 7, so rounded to two decimal places, becomes 3.58. So that's 3,58, or if they've asked you to round up to one decimal place, it's 
six. There we go, not too shabby, hey? Right, let's do the next question. Okay, so again, they tell you O is the center of the circles. That means to me that that is a radius and that whole thing is a radius. Okay, that for me now helps, okay? We also get told that BC is equal to CD, okay? And they tell you that angle D1, if I can find it there, is 20 degrees, okay? Right, it says determine angle O1. Okay, so do you agree that this angle here is 20 degrees as well? Because these two, DC and BC, BC and CD are equal. That means they're base angles of an isosceles triangle. And, but this is at the circumference, okay? So, do you agree that therefore the whole of angle O1 must be 40 degrees because that the angle at the center is twice the angle at circumference? Okay, so let me write that down so you can understand it. So, it says B1 equals 20 degrees. Why? Base angles of triangle uh, BCD, right? Um, therefore, O1 is equal to 40 degrees. Why? Angle at center equals two times the angle at circumference. And the angle we're talking about is this B1. B1's at the circumference. It is subtended by DC. O1 is at the center, also subtended by DC, so that is 40 degrees. That there is 40 degrees. Now they want A1. Oh yeah, let's find out where A1 is. They want A1, this angle here. Okay, so if this is 20 degrees and this is 20 degrees, do you agree that I can get that big angle there because of angle sum of triangles? So I can say angle C, the whole of angle C, is gonna be 180 degrees minus 40 degrees which equals 140 degrees, right? So the whole of that is 140 degrees. Now, angle A1 equals angle C. Why? Exterior angle equals int opposite angle. Therefore, do you agree that that is also 140 degrees? Yay! So A1 is equal to 140 degrees. That was nice, eh? Right, moving on. Right now, it says TA and TB are tangents, which means that they're equal. If you take any point and you draw tangents to the same circle from that point, then these two lines are equal, okay? And they tell us that TS is parallel to BC, okay? And BCX is equal to X, BCS, BCS, B, there it is, is equal to X. Okay, first it says prove that ASBT, ASBT is a cyclic quad. They want us to prove that ASBT is a cyclic quad. Okay, so let's think about cyclic quads. How do you prove things are cyclic quads? We can prove that the exterior angle equals the int up. We can prove that opposite angles are supplementary. We can prove um, subtending. Um, subtended angles are equal. Subtended angles are equal. Those are generally the ways that we prove that something is a cyclic quad. Okay, so we know that this is x, right? Um, okay, do you agree that angle... Okay, let me show you what I'm thinking. This is x. Let's see what else we can get to be equal to x. Do you agree that this angle here is x by the tan chord theorem? This is TB, that is 
going to be the that's that's the tangent that's the chord so therefore b1 angle b1 equals x and it'd be called the tan chord theorem okay so that's x we also know that this equals x why because they base angles of isosceles triangle so we know that a1 let's try again angle a1 equals x um, base angles of isosceles triangle okay or the tan chord theorem it really doesn't matter because there is your tangent there's your chord it's going to get you to the same point okay now what else we also know that there we go um, that S1 equals XY because they're corresponding angles angles and it is that um, TS is parallel to BC so this is also X okay but S1 um, is subtended by AT and B1 is subtended by AT therefore ASBT is a cyclic quad equal angle subtended by equal chords there you go, or by the same chord. There you go, not too bad, hey. Okay, so now we've proven that the purple thing is a cyclic quad. Now we need to prove, let's choose another color, let's go for green, that TS, TS bisects angle ASB. So all we have to do is prove that that's an X. If we can prove that's X, we sort it. Oh, that's easy. Since this is a cyclic quad, since the purple thing is a cyclic quad, if X is subtended by TB, then we can look at S, and S is also subtended by TB, which means that S is also equal to X. And that means that A, S1 and S2 are equal, and therefore TS bisects ASB. Okay, not too bad, hey? Right, now we're moving back on to paper one type questions okay well paper one questions it says solve for x round off to two decimal places if necessary so obviously if you're seeing a rounding off to two decimal places you know that we're going to be using the formula okay so let's have a look at it we've got, it says if necessary so let's see we've got x squared minus 7x plus 12 equals zero your factors of 12, obviously, because obviously x is just x and x, right? So your factors are 12, are 12 and 1, 6 and 2, 4 and 3. And we want it to add up to 7. So it's going to be x minus 7, x, I mean, 4, x minus 3. Therefore, x is equal to 4 or x is equal to to three so that was easy let's look at this so this is probably the one that we're going to need a formula for we've got 6x minus 7 is equal to 4 over x so do you agree we can multiply everything with x to get rid of this denominator so we end up with 6x squared minus 7x is equal to 4 now we can take the 4 across we've got 6x squared minus 7x minus 4 equals 0. Okay, so let's look at the factors of 6. The factors of 6 are 6 and 1 and 3 and 2. And the factors of 4 are 4 and 1, 1 and 4 and 2 and 2. And we need them to multiply to form a 4 hmm, and add up to form a 7. It doesn't seem likely, does it? And they have to be different. So 6 times 1 is 6, and 1 times 4 is um, 4. That does not add up in any way to a 7. 6 times 4 is 24, and 1 times 1, no. Okay, 6 times 2, no. 
Okay, six and two is 12. My, nope, so six doesn't work. Okay, three times one is three and four times two is eight is not going to give us seven. Three times four is 12 minus the plus two is not going to work. Three times two is six. Two times two is four, not going to work. Okay, so we definitely need to use the formula. So let us just erase this bit over here on the right hand side and then we can see if we can find um, we can use the formula appropriately. Okay, so let's do this. So we've got x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so guys, the whole point about this is that you need to remember that this bit here is A, the whole of this bit is B, and the whole of this bit is C. Okay, understand? So now, if we do that, we can see that we've got X is equal to minus minus 7 plus or minus the square root of B squared is 49 minus 4 times by 6 times by minus 4 all over 2 times 6. Minus times a minus is a plus, so it's 7 plus or minus the square root of 49 plus 6 times 4 is 24 times by 4 is 96. 24 times by 4, yep, 96 all over 12. Therefore, we've got 7 plus or minus the square root of 6 and 9 is 15, carry 1, 4 and 9 is 13, that's 145 over 12. Right, so now we need our calculator. So we're going to go, and guys, you're welcome to put this all in your calculator. I just tend to, like it's old habit. Um, when I was in school back in the day, we did have calculators. It wasn't that long ago, but, but a lot of the time we weren't allowed to use them. We had to show our working. So it kind of becomes a habit to just do it mentally. Um, yeah. So therefore that becomes 1.59. So X is 1.59 or if we just go back. And we subtract, put a minus sign there and we say equals minus 0.42 or minus 0. minus 0.42. And those are your answers. There you go. Not too difficult. Hey, you just have to be very careful to be accurate. Okay, now it says given the following inequalities, you've got x squared minus 3x is greater than smaller than or equal to 40, and minus 4x plus 3 is small, smaller than minus 2. First thing it says is solve for x if x squared minus 3x is smaller than or equal to 40. Okay, so let's change color. So we've got x squared minus 3x minus 40 is smaller than or equal to 0. Okay, now what do I need to do is solve for this. So we've got factors of this are 1 and 1. Factors of your 40 are going to be 40 and 1, 20 and 2. Um, next one would be 10 and 4, 8 and 5, um, 7 and 6. That's it. So I would say we're looking at eight and five because we want a difference of three. So it's going to be x minus eight, x plus five is more than equal to zero. Okay, therefore, okay, x minus eight is more than equal to zero, or x plus five is more than equal to zero. Therefore, x is going to be smaller than equal to eight or x is going to be smaller than or equal to negative five. So if we do this on the number line, it would be minus eight, minus five, sorry, 
and eight. And I just want to check my things here. It should be, yeah, so it's going to be smaller or equal to. I'm worried about the fact that I'm getting two smaller than. Okay, so we've got x squared minus 3x minus 40 is smaller than or equal to 0. So x minus 8, x is 5. So therefore, x minus 5. Okay, there's a better way of doing this. Much better way, erase it. Now we need to get out a number line with our numbers. That's what we're going to do. Okay, it's a better way of doing it because you always need to use a number line when you're solving an equation. So we've got there that this is negative 5 and this is 8. And at both of these points, we've got 0. Now, if we had negative 6, do you agree that that would be negative and that would be negative? That would be positive, okay? If we had some number between minus 5 and 8, say 0, 0 minus 8 is negative, but 0 plus 5 is positive, so that would be negative. And then we've got bigger than 8, so that would be positive, and that would be positive, and that would be positive. But we want from here through to here. So x is going to be smaller than or equal to 8 and greater than or equal to negative 5. Excellent. Now it says, solve for x if minus 4x plus 3 is smaller than negative 2. Okay, so negative 4x plus 3 is smaller than negative 2. So negative 4x is smaller than negative 2 minus 3. So negative 4x is smaller than negative 6. So x is going to be bigger than negative 6 over negative 4. Therefore, x is going to be bigger than divide by 2. So it's going to be 3 over 2. Right. Easy peasy here. Now it says, if it is given that x is a natural number, solve for x if. It's in other words, it's got to be, now we need a combination. It has to be a natural number, which means it starts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay? But it fits both these categories. So do you agree it's going to be x is smaller than or equal to 8, but greater than and equal to 1? Okay, natural number, and obviously it'll be x is an element of natural numbers. Okay, because... Sorry, I did that wrong. This is the wrong way around. It has to be x is greater than or equal to 1. Excellent. Let's move on. Right. I like this type of question. It says, given that m plus 1 over m equals 3, it says determine the value of m squared minus 1 plus 1 of m squared. So let's square both of these sides. Okay, so do you agree that this becomes m squared plus 2 times m times 1 over m plus 1 over m squared and that all equals 9. So do you agree that you've got m squared plus, those cancel, 2 plus 1 over m squared is equal to 9. Okay, so therefore we can say that m squared plus 1 over m squared is going to be 9 minus 2, which equals 7. Right, so now they want the value of this thing here. So we've got m squared plus 1 over m squared minus 1, if we rearrange it, which becomes 7 minus 1, which equals 6. Hmm, not too bad, hey? So we know that m squared plus 1 over m squared is equal to 7. Now, let's erase all the other stuff so that we can find the solution for the next thing, which says, hence determine the value of m cubed plus 1 over k. So let's have a look at cubing this. So if we had m plus 1 over m cubed, do you agree it becomes m plus 1 over m 
m plus 1 over m, m plus 1 over m. Right, so we can multiply this out. m times m is m squared. Then this times this is plus 1. This times this is plus 1. And then plus 1 over m squared. All multiplied by m plus 1 over m. Okay, so now it's getting interesting. So we're going to do first term is first term is giving you f cubed. This with, oh, do you agree that that becomes plus 2? We don't have to actually. Okay, this with this cancel we've just got plus m okay then plus two um m plus two over m and then plus m over m squared plus one over m cubed sure Okay, so now let's make that look pretty. So let's just get rid of all of this crap. Sorry, all this stuff. And what are we left with? We're left with m cubed. We've got m plus 2m is 3m. Okay, so that equals 3m. We've got 2 over m plus 1 over m is 3 over m plus 1 over m cubed. Ta -da! But then it said determine the value of. What have I done? Did I cube it? I cube this. Oh, I see. So this becomes m cubed plus 1 over m cubed, right? Plus 3 m plus. Yeah, that doesn't help at all. One over m. Oh, this was equal to m plus 1 over m cubed. Do you agree? So therefore, we can say that we've got m plus 1 over m cubed minus 3 times m plus 1 over m is going to equal to m cubed plus 1 over m cubed. Ha! So... If that's the case, we know that m plus 1 over m cubed is going to be 3 cubed. So that is 3 cubed minus 3 times 3 is equal to m cubed plus 1 over m cubed. 3 cubed is 27 minus 9 is equal to m cubed plus 1 over m cubed. So 27 minus 9 is 18. Ta-da! So that there is the final answer. Okay, grade 11s, let's call it a day at that point. Um, we're going to continue with this, um, qu these questions on Friday. And that'll be our last lesson as well. Have a great day.